we're talking in this lecture about the, an introduction to robust stability. So the concept of robustness has to do with the fact that there is uncertainty that appears in a system. And the question is, can uh, the way a system is built or designed or controlled, is it able to withstand that uncertainty? Or if, if uh, you have uncertainty in the system, is it possible for the system, for example, to go unstable? So we have two different kinds of uncertainty that we would look at. Structured uncertainty, that is, we know something about how the uncertainty arises. That is, it's not completely uncertain, it's, um, but, and in particular, we know the kind of uncertainty to anticipate. Then there's unstructured uncertainty that in, includes various other types of uncertainties, and uh, so th those are the two main methods. And so an important question is, how can we overcome the effects of uncertainty? Or rather, how can we d assess whether a, a s the uncertainty in a system is catastrophic, for example? So what is uncertainty? Basically, it's not knowing exactly. Well, the reason that this is a problem is that what you don't know can indeed hurt you. So some other important questions are, where does it arise in the system and what can we do about it, if anything? So first of all, where does uncertainty arise? It arises in terms of unknown parameters of the modeled dynamics. So say, for example, you have a circuit, RLC circuit. Well, if you look at a resistor, let's say a quarter watt resistor, look at the resistor, it has a precision value, say, say it has a gold band, which means 5% pre precision. That means it could be, um, you know, if you have a, a 100k ohm resistor, it could be 105k ohms, or it could be 95k ohms. So you have, you have those kinds of things. And so you have unknown parameters. That is, you know it's a resistor, but you don't know exactly what its value is. And so the question is, as you put a bunch of these things together, is it possible that their combined, um, that their combined uncertainty can create huge uncertainties, for example? Then there's the question of unmodeled dynamics. That is, you have a model for the system, but maybe your model isn't complete. Maybe there are other things going on. So for example, with circuits, at high frequencies, uh, even, even just pieces of wire can act as a as a receiver, or it can act as a capacitor or an inductor, depending on how it's set up. In which case, if you didn't incorporate that capacitance or that inductance into your circuit model, then you have unmodeled dynamics. Um, your system also may have nonlinearities. That is, at you know you may have a resistor, but if you are near its uh, breaking point, it might not act linear. Okay. There are also saturation nonlinearities, hysteresis, all kinds of other nonlinearities. And then you can also have variations of parameters. So, for example, you have a circuit, and in the morning when it's cool, you, you, know, you have one resistance value, and as the day heats up, the resistance value may change or drop or whatever that way. So you might have periodic variation of parameters due to things like heat. So this is a, this is a, a significant problem on board, uh, for example, satellite systems, where when it when as the satellite orbits the Earth, on one side of the orbit it's closer to the sun, on the other side of the orbit it's further from the sun. On one side of the orbit you get the direct sunlight, on the other side you may be getting um, darkness, in which case it's cold, and so you, you have these heat and cooling cycles that take place, and those can affect some of the various parameters. All right, let's look at, it, at a quick example. Here I have an inaccurate power amplifier. I'm sorry, this is what I desire. That is, Y follows R. So this is actually the standard uh, tracking problem, and we want it to happen accurately. So you say, well, why don't you just let Y, why don't you just use R instead of Y? Well, the thing is, even though you have a gain of one here, you may have a change of units. So for example, 
this unit may be in terms of voltage, this unit may be, say, in terms of pressure, or the speed of your car, for example. So you would set this to be 65, and you would want the output at the speed of your car to be 65, for example. So, um, so even though it's a one here, there's actually a conversion of units that often takes place here. Um, so this is what we desire, but this is what we actually have. Okay, so we went back, we were rumming Jing on the shelves, and this is what we got, came up with. All right, so it has a high gain, and it has uncertainty. So the uncertainty is plus or minus 50%. Okay, so that's absolute value less than 0.5 means that the means that this quantity here has a gain of 1, and it could be 1 plus 0.5, which is 150% positive, or it could be 1 minus 0.5, which is 0.5. So anywhere from 1.5 to 0.5 is what I have here. So that's a pretty significant um, variation. So overall, this gain is not like this at all, right? So we now close the loop around our system. Okay, so this is what we have. When we close the loop, we obtain this transfer function. 100 times 1 plus delta over 1 plus 100 1 plus delta. And this, I can simplify down to this quantity. 1 minus this quantity that involves the delta. So, so we have something that's almost 1, and then we have this other uncertainty part here. And so we can call all that stuff delta tilde. Okay, so this stuff here is delta tilde that involves delta. And so for delta equals 0.5, we get one value. For delta is equal to 1.5, we get another value. And so the delta tilde, when we plug those values in, ends up being in this range between 0 0.00662 and 0 0.0196. So this is 2%. So overall, the uncertainty then is within 2%. So that is, we, we actually have this situation, which is 1 minus the uncertainty, and the uncertainty is within 2% error. Okay, so we're actually doing pretty good. Okay, Point, we're, we're better than 0.98. So even though it's not exactly 1, we've gotten a whole lot closer than what we had before, and it's, it's actually not too bad. And, and we're able to use that part that uh, maybe wasn't used elsewhere, or or maybe have been very expensive, or who knows. But anyway, um, you can see that using feedback, we're able to account for uncertainty. Here's the second problem, disturbance rejection. Here we have a plant, and its transfer function is equal to 1, just like we'd like, except now we have a disturbance that enters our system. Okay, And so notice that the disturbance and the control signal enter in the same way which means they basically have the same influence on the output as each other. We again close the loop around this, so that is we allow the control signal to be some constant times this. Okay, and so, so this is now our transfer function. And so now we want y to look like r. And so the, the, our transfer function now, since we have two input, actually looks like this. Okay, k over 1 plus k and 1 over 1 plus k. So if we let k equal 50, for example, and this, that's just an example. We could have used 100, but if we let k equal 50, this quantity becomes 0.98. This quantity becomes 0 0.0196. And so the effect of y with r and the effect of y with respect to w so W, we can consider to be a noise. And so the ratio of, the, of this value by this value, if we compute that in dB, we get 34 dB. So that's the signal to noise ratio, 34 dB, which is not bad. Definitely an improvement. And again, if we had chosen a larger value of K, we could have done even better. We compare the original. This was the original system. And this had zero signal to noise ratio. Uh, that is a signal to noise ratio equal zero dB, which means that these two guys have the same weighting. So you can see that this is almost a hundred, 
uh, rather 50 times greater than this. Okay, so that's significantly bigger impact that this has than this has. And so in both of these cases, we used feedback. And how did the feedback help? Well, it turns out a high gain in the loop can have a lot of benefits. It helped us with the uncertainty in our plant. It also helped us with disturbances. So that's the basic idea behind what we want to be able to accomplish in the midst of a certain uncertain system.